Hello there. I'm back with another knife review. This is a U.S. Classic brand pocket knife. It says right here, I don't know if you can read it or not, designed. Let me see if I can get it to focus a bit. I don't know if that helped or not. But it says designed in Salt River, Kentucky, 2005. Now, the brand name is U.S. Classic. But I promise you, there's nothing U.S. about this knife. Except maybe the people that imported it. Okay? Uh, there is no Salt River, Kentucky as such. There is a Salt River in Kentucky. It's sometimes also called the Long River. But, but as far as I can find, there is no, no town or city or province or territory or, or whatever you want to call it. County called Salt River. Okay. So, right off the bat, and also, they're saying designed. So, what does that tell you? They didn't say made, because if it was made, they'd say made in Salt River, Kentucky. So, let's look at this knife. Now, we know 2005, so it was probably manufactured somewhere around that time. Or sold somewhere around that time. You open it up. Let's put these here. It's wrapped in like wax paper. And it's got a shield on it, but the shield doesn't have any writing on it. It's red pick bone. And now that's a pretty knife. The fit you and finish is real good you cannot see you cannot feel that transition at all it's like one piece of one piece the only rivet that you can feel you can't even hardly feel the shield you can feel it an indentation from because the pick the picked bone or a picked bone has got all those ridges and stuff it, that's the only rivet or pin you can feel in this. The only flaw that I can find on this knife, if you look at the spine, I don't know if it'll show it, but you see all this dark up against the edges where the covers meet the knife. I don't know if you can see that. When I got it, I thought, well, that's a little bit of tarnish because it's a, a little bit older knife. But it isn't. If you look real close, you can see I've scraped some of it off. What that is, I took a razor blade and did that. And what that is, is... The epoxy or the glue they use to glue the to glue these covers on. So that's a bit sloppy in my opinion. They could have gotten that off with a buffer really easily. Whoever did it just didn't care. But now there are no discernible gaps. The fit and finish, like I said, is beautiful. I like. But you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, but you can see little bits of that epoxy here let me see it along that bolster or liner so but this has got it's got a half Feels like it has half stop, yep. 
This is a, I can get it open. This is a muskrat pattern. And this was a pattern supposedly used by, and the reason I say supposedly is all of these traditional pocket knives, one of the fun things about them, and one of the most enjoyable things about these knives, is all the different patterns. Now you see the main blade says U.S. Classic. It says U.S. Classic. I believe it says Salt River, Kentucky, or whatever. Uh, it says 440 Razor Edge, and I don't know what that emblem below it is because I'm blind as a bat and cannot see. But I don't see, yeah, here it is, China. Can you see that? Now this is, what I was saying is that one of the fun things about these traditional pattern knives is all the different patterns. And all the different variations on all the different patterns. And uh, so I say supposedly when I talk about them because a lot of times these knives have built sort of a mystique or kind of a legend like the trapper knife. You know, the, the, despite the fact that the trapper is an invention, an invention of the 1930s by Case, okay, there's this legend that they won the West and all of that. So a lot of these patterns supposedly had a specific purpose at one time. Now this muskrat pattern has two identical skinning blades. And these knives were used, supposedly, to skin muskrats and mink and whatever the trapper, beaver, whatever the trapper trapped and made a living on. And so that is supposedly what this pattern is. But collecting these different patterns. Now there are patterns that, and the deal was, you know, if you skinned one and the knife got dull, you had another blade, exact same thing, that kind of deal. Some of these patterns I don't collect. I don't like them. Okay. But the ones I do, I really enjoy collecting. The only knock that I can find on this knife is that some. there's a bit about the way it feels. These corners are really sharp. They're, they come to a... There's no relief at all in them at all. None whatsoever. So the knife feels kind of square in your hands. But that's not really a, a big issue. And that's a beautiful knife. So I, I don't know who made them. It says 440 on it. So it's probably 440A. Something like that. If it's heat treated and tempered properly, it should be not too bad of a knife. Uh, but if you find one of these, you might want to pick it up, give it a look, handle it, and, and look it over. And if you like it, Hey, I bought one. <laughs> so that's it. The U.S. Classic Muskrat Knife. Now, I can't find these knives for sale anywhere. So they may be discontinued or my Google Foo might just suck. Okay, and that's always a possibility. But... It pays to look in thrift stores, flea markets, flea markets, markets particularly. So that's the muskrat by U.S. Classic Knives. Very nice for the price. Later.